In this video, I'm gonna review the BenQ EX2080 1440p 140Hz refresh gaming slash work monitor. Now, before I say anything, before we get into the details of this monitor, I just wanna say that this is technically a sponsored video. BenQ sent me this monitor for free, but that being said, I'm gonna be giving my honest opinion of it from the perspective of a computer programmer. I'm a computer programmer, and I'm also a gamer, a fairly competitive gamer. I'm not like a pro gamer or anything like that, but typically, you know, I'm the type of guy that does not play a game unless I can play it ranked. It just doesn't make sense to me. Competing is what I like to do in games. So here's kind of a brief summary of what the structure of this video is gonna look like. So I'm gonna start by my perspective. So I want I want you to understand the perspective I'm coming at this with. I'm gonna look at it, at, you know, that I, the same things, the same way I would look at if I go to buy a monitor. So I wanna explain, you know, my perspective. I think that's important. Next, I'm gonna talk about the, the monitor and the different types of monitors that you'll be looking at when you go and shop for a monitor. So what type of monitor is this? How does that fit into, the kind of ecosystem of, of monitors as a whole. Just This is gonna be very brief, but I, I think it's important to explain that. Uh, the pros of this monitor, the cons of this monitor, and then kind of my perspective on the pros and the cons and how you would weigh those depending on your scenario. Uh, and then we're gonna finish up with like the contents of the box. So just like what it comes with, what kind of plugs it has, and then finish off with like an overall summary. Like what I think, would I go buy this monitor? Is it worth it? Okay, so let's start with uh, my perspective. So as I said at the beginning of the video, I am a programmer, I'm a software engineer, a software developer, whatever you wanna call it. I sit on a computer eight hours, 10 hours a day, and I write code, I build apps, I do computer programming, basically. So I spend a lot of time on a computer. And then in my free time, I do other things off the computer, like you know working out and things like that, but to have fun, like just when I go and wanna relax, I play video games and I play com uh, competitive video games or I play video games competitively, I guess you would say. And I just wanna you know, make it really clear, I'm not a pro gamer, but any game that I play generally, you know, I hunker down on like a single game and that's the only game that I play because I, I like to get good at it. I, I just, you know, I'm the type of person that doesn't see the point in playing a game unless I can play like ranked and, you know, just be really competitive, I guess, in general. So I'm sure there's lots of you out there who, who are uh, similar in that regard. So what does all that mean? Well, that means that I need a monitor that I, I like to use all day long when I'm working. So it's gotta like look nice, it's gotta be big, it's gotta not like strain my eyes. Uh, number two is I gotta be able to play games on it. And, and the hardware cannot be a limiting factor in uh, how I play the game. So like if in any way the hardware is causing me to like die randomly when I'm competing, I hate that. So having a, a monitor that I like, that looks good, easy on the eyes, and that I, I can uh, play competitively with. So this monitor is a 1440p, AKA 2K monitor with a 144 hertz refresh rate and a five millisecond response time. Now, if you've shopped for monitors, if you're a gamer and you look into these kind of nerdy specs, I'm sure you know what that means. But for those of you who don't know what I just said, have no idea what those metrics are, let me just stop and explain a little bit about that. So generally speaking, there are three types of monitors out there, IPS monitors, TN monitors and VA monitors. First, let's talk about IPS monitors. So I started with IPS monitors because this monitor that I'm reviewing is an IPS monitor. Now IPS monitors, generally they are categorized by having uh, the best colors, the best contrast, great resolutions, and generally a response time of four milliseconds and higher. So when you think of IPS monitors, generally what you need to know is they have generally speaking, the best colors, so they look the best, and they have uh, you know good response times, four milliseconds and up. So not the best response times, but good response times. TN monitors are essentially the opposite of what an IPS monitor is. They basically sacrifice look, so like what it looks like, the colors, the contrast, things like that, uh, for performance. So their contrast, their colors, their resolutions are generally lower, they're, they're lower quality, they don't look as good, the colors kind of look washed out, they're just generally not a great looking monitor, but their performance is really good. So if you're a professional gamer, you're probably using a TN monitor, they're gonna have you know one millisecond response times, 140 hertz, 144 hertz refresh rates or higher, they can even go up to, I think it's two, 240 hertz, whatever the next metric up for refresh rates, they go up there and they're generally the, the cheapest. So you get, Great performance, good price, but it doesn't look great. Now the third type of monitor that I mentioned was a VA monitor. These monitors, I'm not really gonna to talk too much about. Basically they're a, uh, a combination of the two. They have like okay look, okay performance. 
I'm not going to talk anymore about them because if you are any kind of a, a person like me who's a ga- who's a competitive gamer or you sit a long time on the computer, probably you won't be shopping for these. You're either going to go for IPS, which is the best look, or you're going to go for the TN, which is the best performance. So the monitor that I'm reviewing in this video, the BenQ, the one that I've been talking about, is an IPS monitor. It has a 144 hertz refresh rate, a five millisecond response time, and a resolution of 1440p, which is otherwise known as 2K. This is a, a beautiful looking monitor. My first impressions when I set it up were just like, Wow, and by the way, I'm coming from a TN monitor. I used to use a TN monitor, which is a one millisecond response time, 144 hertz, a 1080p. So it was a, it was a good monitor, but it was a TN monitor. So it didn't look great. The colors were washed out. So when I first set up this thing, I just thought, wow. Like I looked, I just stepped back. I set my desktop background, and I just said, holy, this looks crazy. Uh, you can set a bunch of different kind of color modes, like game mode, uh, video mode, different things, and they all looked like really, really nice. So essentially the, the takeaway is this monitor is is beautiful. The colors are beautiful, the, the contrast looks great, everything looks really good. If you're playing RPG games, MMO games, this is the monitor that you would want to use or you know like Skyrim any kind of graphically intensive game that has you know great visuals this is probably a really really good monitor for that so i actually hooked this monitor up and i played with it for quite a few hours uh, i went back and forth between my old one which was the 1080p one millisecond it was also a benq monitor it was just uh, it was a, a tn monitor so with great performance just the colors didn't look great i went back and forth between the two playing apex legends uh, i'll roll some some film here of me playing um, so here is here's a film of some film of me playing on the 1440 on high settings. You can clearly see that it is like laggy, it's choppy. And I should mention that I'm using a pretty powerful computer. I have, you know, 32 gigs of RAM, I have an i9, I have a GeForce 2080 RTX Super, which is a pretty powerful graphics card. And I have, I put settings on high for this and you can see that it is, it's very choppy. You know, I, I, I really would say that this was pretty much not playable. I had a very bad time playing with, with high settings using this monitor. So then I decided to hook up my old 1080p, 144 hertz, one millisecond response time monitor. I put the settings on high also and I played and just to see what it was like to compare it. And I have to say this was also kind of unplayable, which is really surprising because I have a pretty beastly computer, but the lag was the lag was quite bad. It was definitely better than the BenQ, the big BenQ monitor that I'm reviewing in this video, but it's still, I would say at high settings was kind of unplayable. So at this point I stopped and I said, okay, well high settings, obviously isn't good for either monitor. I didn't really have a good experience either way. Maybe one was slightly better, but still both were not great. So at this point I reduced my settings to kind of about half of what they were at before, the performance related settings, and I redid this test. So on the 1440p monitor, the BenQ monitor that I'm reviewing in this one, uh, reducing the, the settings to half or the performance related settings to half really had a, a great effect on my my user experience. This this was much more playable. I had a much better time, much less like lag, but overall still I would say it was not great, honestly. Um, but you know, I'm coming from a, a one millisecond monitor and I really did notice that that delay. It's almost like it drags uh, it drags the the view a little bit, I guess, but I'm, I'm playing a very fast paced game. This has got to be one of the fastest FPS games that you could play right now, Apex Legends. And it's, uh, yeah, I mean, I definitely noticed a difference, but I think here in this case, we're looking at at extremes. So next I hooked up my old monitor. I reduced the settings by half and I had a game. So this is generally what I was playing at before. This this is definitely the best case scenario. Um, this this was great. You know, the one millisecond response time, half of the performance related settings. This was definitely the best user experience for me using a one millisecond monitor. So regarding regarding gaming, I would say that the, the five millisecond response time for this monitor really for me personally has a big effect. And just to be clear, I wanna make sure that you understand what I'm saying here. My old monitor, my 1080p, one millisecond BenQ monitor, I would play games on that hands down over this new monitor that I got. Even though the the colors, the contrast, everything looks way better, just performance wise for me as like a, a very competitive gamer, I, I can't have any, it bothered me, it made me, it made me angry. Every time I was playing, I was just, I felt like I was uh, at a disadvantage because I could tell the, 
the screen was dragging almost. Now, if you don't haven't played on a one millisecond monitor or you're not playing like a really fast uh, game, like Apex Legends, like I said, has got to be one of the fastest FPS games that you could play right now. Um, you know, you probably wouldn't notice. I, I would say I barely noticed, but because I came from the one millisecond monitor, it was pretty obvious to me. So I guess just to summarize kind of my experience using this monitor, going back and forth to my old monitor, um, you know, I, I would just say that using the monitor is really nice. I loved like I opened up my IDE, I was doing some programming, that kind of stuff. You know, it was really great. I, I love the way it looks, watching YouTube videos, that kind of stuff, really, really vibrant, really nice colors. But when it comes to gaming, which is sort of like a, a pretty, it's pretty much the deciding factor for me, um, I, I wouldn't play with that monitor. I don't even know what I'm going to do with it now, to be honest. I have it here. What I'll probably do is set up both monitors. I'll have them side by side and I'll have one for, you know, after work when I decide to game, I'll use my old BenQ one millisecond. And then when I'm working, I'll probably use the, the five millisecond monitor, the one that I'm reviewing in this video, because the extra space is nice. It's huge. I love the way it looks. Um, yeah, that's, that's probably what I'll end up doing. So now let's, let's talk about what comes with this monitor and about the, the plugs in the back. So what kind of connections do you have? It comes with a, a USB-C connector. It comes with a power cable and it comes with an HDMI cable. Now keep in mind the HDMI output, the HDMI plug on this monitor does support 144 Hertz refresh rate. I know uh, I used to have like in my BenQ, my old one, my one millisecond monitor, the HDMI cable does not support 144 Hertz. If I plug the HDMI in, I go to switch it, it won't do it. You have to use DisplayPort. But that's not the case with this new monitor. I think it uses something called HDMI 2 or something like that. But either way, it doesn't matter. You can use the DisplayPort, you can use the USB-C, you can use the HDMI cable. Any of those ports will support 144 Hertz refresh rate, which I think is a nice thing because on the back of a computer, you're limited to what kind of plugs you have. Now, one thing I actually forgot to talk about was this monitor has speakers and it has some pretty good speakers. I cranked it to max volume and I was playing Apex. I watched some videos. It's, um, even if you crank it on max, it's not gonna hurt your ears or anything like that, but it's loud enough that I definitely could play the game. I could watch a video. So that that's a pretty cool bonus feature for this monitor, especially because it's a 27 inch. You know, you could watch a movie on it. You could watch YouTube videos on it. You can, you know, sit back, uh, put your feet up and watch something, turn on the speakers. You wouldn't need any extras. Although if you wanted to have something that was fairly loud, you definitely would have to hook up extra speakers because these ones are not gonna hurt anybody's ears, that's for sure. One other thing that I actually forgot to talk about was the viewing angles. So back when I was talking about the different types of monitors, you got TN, IPS, and uh, VA. The IPS monitors have the best viewing angles. So this monitor, the one that I'm reviewing, has really great viewing angles. And what I mean by that is if I go over to the side of it, I can still see what's on the screen. It doesn't kind of get like blackened or darker or make me unable to see it. So if you were hoping to use this monitor at work or for maybe like a staff room or a conference room, something like that, this would be a good monitor to do that because no matter where you're standing, whether you're right on the side of the right or right on the side of the left, up, down, whatever, you're still gonna see, you're gonna still have great viewing angles. And you can see here from the video that I'm putting on the screen is I took the camera and I moved it kind of to the side. You can see that there's my old one millisecond monitor, my old BenQ one. You can see that the viewing angles are not very good. This is a TN monitor. But here is the, the new monitor, the IPS monitor, the one that I'm reviewing in this video. You can see it, you know, clear as day what's on the screen. So now let's talk about price. And this is the last thing I'm gonna talk about before I give my kind of overall summary of like whether or not I would buy this monitor. I believe this monitor retails at about $600 Canadian. Just to give you some perspective, my old BenQ monitor, which is a one millisecond monitor, that retails at about $300 Canadian. So it's essentially double the price of what a uh, slightly smaller but different type of monitor is. So remember, this is an IPS monitor. The, my old monitor is a TN monitor, so it's cheaper to manufacture. So basically, yeah, like double the price for uh, three inches more because it's 27 inches, better colors, better contrast, um, a pretty decent response time, which is five milliseconds, 144 Hertz, great viewing angles and 1440p. So overall, I think, I think it's a great monitor. Like I would for sure buy this monitor if it weren't for the five milliseconds, but that's just my perspective because I, like I said, I'm a competitive gamer. The, the millisecond, the five millisecond response time is pretty much a done deal for me. 
I, you know, moving forward, this monitor is probably going to be my kind of work monitor. I'm going to do all my coding on it, all my video recording, my video editing, that kind of stuff. But when it comes to leisurely time, uh, I'm going to have to go with my, my old BenQ, which is a 144 hertz, one millisecond monitor. That's it for this video. Hopefully you enjoyed it. Hopefully I give you some perspective when it comes to shopping for a monitor, especially a gaming monitor. Don't forget to hit that like button. If you don't tell YouTube that you like these videos, it doesn't recommend it to other people. And my, my videos just get lost into the deep, dark abyss of YouTube. So please take two seconds, go down there, turn that white thumbs up into a blue thumbs up. I really appreciate it. Thank you very much. And if you're watching this video and you're not a regular subscriber, you've never seen my videos before, typically I don't do review videos. This is actually my first review video. Typically I do programming tutorials. I teach people how to become a software developer, how to interview better for software development jobs, how to become a programmer. Um, I kind of specialize in Android app development. Mostly, most of my stuff is on Android apps. So Android phones, the apps that go on the Android phones. I also do some web development stuff. So if you're interested in programming at all, I got some great beginner courses. Head on over to my YouTube channel. Check it out if you're interested in learning how to program. Thanks again, and I'll see you in the next video.